Wondering if you would mind if my husband, the Reverend Soames, and I came in and sat a while, get out of the way of this terrible storm. Why, surely. Well, that is right and neighborly of you, I do declare. <laughs> Normally, my husband, the Reverend, he likes to see the snow on the ground. He says the only time our garden looks as nice as the one next door. <laughs> I'm Willard Park. Well, don't apologize, it's all right. <laughs> and this is my daughter, Grace. <laughs> she can play a tune on the bagpipe. Why, wow, that's amazing, Grace. <laughs> so the Reverend would like to hear a clear hit. Well, I'm afraid he's a mite uh, hard of hearing. As a matter of fact, he is so deep that last week he conducted a prayer meeting for three hours kneeling on the cat. He <laughs> <laughs> sure as hell did upset the deacon. The kneeler? No, the, de the deacon, dear. You know our deacon? He's the son of a bishop. They all are. <laughs> I was wondering if you might just have a wee drop of whiskey in the house. Oh, but the Reverend, surely oh, I... Oh, medicinal purposes only, I do assure you. I have a slight cold. <laughs> the world's best scientific brains tell us that whiskey cannot cure the common cold. Nor can the world's best scientific brains. So move your ass to your daughter if she would be so... <laughs> I'll get it. Oh, I'll show you where it is. Sure would appreciate that. <laughs> My, she's big. I like them big. Now you just keep your cotton-picking hands to yourself and leave her alone. I was just going to give her a piece of sympathy. Yeah, and I know your interpretation of that word sympathy. A little fellow feeling. <laughs> Mind, uh, he's quite nice. He's conceited. All handsome men are. I'm not. You, you have only got to hear a clap of thunder and you go to the window and take a bow. <laughs> you have only got to go to a roping match and see a scrum and you think they're all talking about you. And look at you, you are about as sexy as a dose of syrup of figs. We interrupt this broadcast with the news that Bonnie and Clyde, the notorious gangsters, have been seen in this vicinity. They are wearing old fawn raincoats which they stole from Martin's store. <laughs> this was to cover up their own clothes which consisted of a green dress and a pinstriped suit. You're Bonnie and Clyde! You're the ones that's got all that money that belongs to the bank! Uh Honey, I do assure you, I am just as poor as a church mouse. Why, the only thing I've got between me and the poor house is this little second-hand pistol that's pointed straight at your head. Thank you, darling. Hang on a minute. And go and get the sheriff. I think I'll come with you, Willard. What, and leave her alone in here with him? Why, now, you don't think that anything untoward would happen, do you? Why, honey, you ain't scared about being molested? I mean, you ain't afraid of having your lovely body fondled, are you? No, I ain't scared. I was talking to him. <laughs> I ain't scared. You see, he ain't scared. Oh, yeah, but he, he could lock the door and have his way with her. Why, he wouldn't do a thing like that. He's too fine. He's too decent. He's too damn old, that's true. <laughs> Why, do you know his last birthday party? The candles cost more than a cake. Did you count them? I tried to, but the heat drove me back. Well, you did you. Only time you look normal is Halloween. She got her face lifted, and when they saw what was underneath, they let it drop again. <laughs> and look at that figure. Like a kangaroo with all the kids home. Why, you don't know nothing. Last week, he went fly fishing, and he came back with a seven-pound blue bottle. He is just plain ignorant. I went to school, stupid. And you come out the same way and all. <laughs> oh, man, so big. Whenever she smiles, she gets lipstick in her ears. <laughs> My mama does not have a big mouth. Your mama sleeps with her false teeth in a bucket. <laughs> when the hell about your mama? I could put both my hands in your mama's mouth up to my elbows and still wind my wool. Get on off with it. I'll never dig it. You don't think much of us small town folk. Who don't? You, you city slickers. Why, honey, I ain't no city slicker. Why, the town I come from is so small, we had to widen the main road to put a white line down the middle. Just a one-horse town. And there was two butchers fighting over him, too. <laughs> Why, you know, my mama and papa were so poor, they couldn't afford to buy me clothes. I had to run around the house naked till I was 15. Then what? They bought me a hat so I could look out the window. <laughs> And then one day, I met Horace. 
Oh, he was wonderful, Horace. You see, we had a big house in the front and he had a flat behind. <laughs> he bought me a lovely new dress. It was low at the back and, and low at the front. and I was so excited I could hardly contain myself. <laughs> he used to do bird impersonations. You know, they were so realistic, I was afraid to look up. <laughs> and I think of him doing them bird impersonations why, well, I can almost smell the custard. <laughs> and then one day we quarreled about the wedding plans. You see, I wanted a white wedding with a lovely white dress and bridesmaids and everything, and he wanted to call the whole damn thing off. <laughs> I was just unlucky, I guess. You know, the only time we ever made love was on the waterbed, and I got seasick. <laughs> then I left, and his house burned down, and he was poached to death. <laughs> Very sad. You know, I sometimes think that I'm so unlucky, if it was raining soup, I'd have a fork. <laughs> My Well, that's brought a little color back to your cheeks now, hasn't it, eh? It's green, but it's color. Oh, hold on. Thanks kindly. <laughs> Is my face dirty or is it my imagination? Well, your face is clean. I don't know about your imagination. What in heaven's name are you doing there? Goodness gracious me. Uh, oh, we, we ain't got no money. Why, now, you didn't think we was going to rob you now, did you? We just went in somewhere to hold up for the night. For the night? Y you see, he got to get up early tomorrow morning before the bank opens. <laughs> oh, oh, we don't like you for the ride here, but you see, we only got two beds. So you got to give me your word of honor that you'll sleep with my daughter and your partner here will sleep with me. Because we're mighty moral folks around these parts. Why well, now, Willard, I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> that is our no removal way of carrying on. <laughs> <laughs> You can't. Now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to let you lock the door and you can keep the key. Now, how about that? Oh, thank you. It's okay. Now, is everything shut up? Yeah. Everything else is. <laughs> Good night, Parr. Good night, Grace. <laughs>